There's so much to talk about. I'm probably gonna talk about this over the course of the next few streams. Overall, the season of Discovery announcement, when it happened, there's, there's some degree of reading between the lines. There's some degree of like, I just straight up know from, from talking to people, right? Like what their sentiments are. Here's what I feel like should be done given the situation. When we first heard the announcement, myself and I think of a lot of people were like, question mark, season of Discovery. It sounded like some bullshit. My initial reaction to them explaining what Season of Discovery is, uh, it sounded like it was on the same tier of like pristine servers. Like, okay, we're not trying to give you guys legacy servers. We're not trying to give you guys classic. We're giving you guys something like some kind of consolation prize. That was my initial reaction and I felt kind of confused. That's how I felt. I, I don't necessarily like some of the things about it. I don't, I don't necessarily like some of the decisions. I feel like they're going a little bit overboard, but I can delve into that a little bit. However, after playing it, I actually thought it was a lot of fun. Got to play with the devs and stuff, which is cool. They got to explain some things a little bit. Uh, Rhett Paladins are disgusting. I mean, I, to be fair, Rhett was super strong in Season of Discovery, like ridiculously strong. But it's kind of unfair to compare my damage to everybody else because I, look, I'm number one Rhett Paladin, baby. Look, the Lion of Stormwind. Okay, the Persian Lion, the Lion of Stormwind, the Grand Marshal Scarab Lord, okay? Back to back, two-time Gladiator, all right? Season three, season four. Got Gladiator six days before I went to Korea. I was on vacation, okay? Sipping on soju in South Korea while I was getting Gladiator, all right? I didn't care, I was fully confident. I knew I was gonna get glad. Safe glad six days before the end of the season, all right? That's how damn good I am. It's kind of unfair to compare. Also, uh, I had like my add-ons and my keybinds all set, and, and I and I brought a Razor Naga, and uh, nobody else had that. But none of that matters, okay? None of that matters, all right? None of that matters. It's the skill, okay? The raw, pure, unadulterated skill. That's how it's doing double damage. I think having a lot of fun doesn't necessarily mean something is good. Just because something is fun, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be fun in two months, right? And that's when I think you go from being fun to being good. I think that's what the differentiation is between the two. I feel like playing it was a little bit eye-opening. And I also feel like they did an incredible job during the classic panel, right? The team coming up, at Agrand, uh, Anna, I mean the whole, the whole team, right? Coming up and, and kind of explaining the different parts of the presentation. I think the presentation was, was great. And I think they hit on two key points during that presentation. The two key points during that presentation were, uh, that we wanted to stay true to classic and we wanted to we wanted to maintain class fantasy Let's go back and watch the announcement itself. Let's go watch the announcement of, of uh, Season of Discovery from the opening ceremony if we can uh, pull that up here. There's Holly dude How about that jacket? Dude, she came out and I was like damn like this jacket is sick and Everybody was talking about it on Twitter. Did you guys see that? Yeah, epic armor dude legendary armor you're going to discover new secrets as you scour the world and find class-altering abilities. <laughs> Dude, I remember hearing this and I was like... What would be like to be a tanking warlock? <laughs> as soon as she said tanking warlock, I was like... the role of a mage healer? I, I, I did not. This made me feel weird, dude. It's, it's really hard to try and balance doing conventions and trying to like do do stream content and and trying to meet people and do everything but i but i really try my best because the way that i see it i mean there was we did a blizzcon four years ago who knows whenever you run into somebody or whatever and it might be the only chance that you get to like get a picture and just say hi and uh it might be the only time right now, there's a line between that and like hanging around and having like a long conversation or something like that because it, that's just really hard to do with everybody so then it's like that that's a whole thing but um at the very least, I, I always try my best unless I'm I have to go do something and I'm running late. I always try to like make time to to meet with people because it might be the only chance, you know. So whenever she gave this announcement, whenever Holly gave this announcement, I I felt very conflicted because there are some things about this that don't feel natural to me. I I, I naturally do not like the idea of mage healers. I naturally do not like the idea of rogue tanks and warlock tanks and all these different things because uh, of a certain point of emphasis that they had in their presentation later on, which we can look at. Um, and I'm just gonna pull up the slide, actually. But uh, it's it's class fantasy. I understand how you can explain that I'll a mage, I, I, I get how you can explain that a mage is healing. 
I, I <laughs> understand okay. how you can explain that. I understand how you can explain that a warlock is tanking. I get how you're trying to do the, the gymnastics to figure that out. I just feel like a big point of what Classic WoW is, let me pull up the slide real quick. You see this slide? <laughs> I was talking to Tim Jones, uh, one of the leads on Classic. I was talking to Tim Jones about this. Literally, they put this in the slide. That's why I started laughing so hard, because I was like, the, the big thing right now, I said some warriors are worried about is that they're gonna get nerfed because they're so strong in Classic. And he, he laughed. And he was like, really? It's funny. And he's like, that's funny you say that. And that's like all he said. It was just like, it was, his reaction was just like funny. Now, I don't think they're going to actually nerf warriors, but the fact that they like recognize that warriors have like this crazy scaling in vanilla that wasn't really apparent 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, is kind of funny. The night you did the VR zombie game, you said this too. Yeah, like, uh, interesting. Interesting that they mentioned that. Cause like, I, he, it, it, I think he laughed cause he knew what was in the presentation. And like, I said the same thing. Here's the big thing. Here's the big thing is I am focusing in on really these two key points. Focus on class fantasy and staying true to classic. And I do think it's very important that these two are key because I feel like that's what you have in Vanilla WoW and in Burning Crusade and it starts, what your class does, it is like you are a paladin and you do paladin things, okay? You do paladin things and you, you are a paladin. And it's, it's you, when you play a paladin, you feel like a paladin. When you play a rogue, you do rogue things and you feel like a rogue. When you play a mage, you do mage things, you feel like a mage. That class fantasy is very, very, very important. It's, it's, that's, that's a key element of what Vanilla WoW is. And it's something that uh, Blizzard has kind of given up over the years for the sake of like balancing the game, right? I'm talking about this, this bullet point right here. They want to make the game more balanced. They want to make the game more, uh, th like the, the changes that, made, that they've made over the years, you guys know it all. The problem is, is as you move away from that class fantasy and you get that feeling of like, of everybody can do everything or, or too many classes can do too many things, you start moving away from that class fantasy because what your class does well stops feeling special. That's why I naturally am, am opposed to the idea of like mage healing, warlock tanking. It's funny, actually warlock tanking at first I was like super opposed to. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, well, may maybe that one does kind of fall in the line of like class fantasy, but like rogue tanking doesn't really make sense to me. Mage healing doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, and even with a mage, like you can be like, oh, well, like look at the idea of like a white mage, right? Like a white mage is like a healer. But I think for staying true to classic on the next bullet point, that's kind of what solidifies those things as things that aren't really like super intrinsic to what Classic WoW is. Now I could be wrong and these things could be fun and fine. I feel like it can, the, the game kind of starts to unravel a little bit, you know, where all of a sudden everybody is really, really strong. Everybody is really powerful. There's too many, there's too many different people that can do too many different things, which requires you to basically like do things with less people and to have less people uh, or less variety in, in not only who, what classes you play with, but also less variety in, in who you play with. Like for a paladin, a paladin can tank heal DPS. A druid can tank heal DPS. Uh, in my opinion, a shaman should be able to like off tank and tank five mans heal and DPS. I think a shaman being a main tank for a raid would be sick, but I think a shaman tank should be at the same level of like, uh, maybe slightly better than what a prop paladin tank was, or maybe at the same level of what a prop paladin tank was, but more streamlined in a season of discovery. And uh, you can actually shaman tank, but it's really, it's really hard in vanilla. Like you can tank five mans and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like that's kind of the level that you should be at. I think when they're referring to 60s, here's the thing. People keep saying we want a classic plus. This isn't classic plus. In my opinion, you're right. This is not classic plus. This is classic plus beta. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. They're trying to throw everything at the wall and see what people like. They're literally testing. And, and you know what kind of proved that? And I think it was when Agron went up there, somebody went up there and yes. was talking about how uh, they drew inspiration from the classic beta. Yeah, inspired by WoW classic beta. Now I saw this, and if you guys were watching my BlizzCon stream, I talked about this in between the panels, where I was like, you know what? They're talking about periodically increasing the level and there's no beta. They're like, guys, season of discovery is here. 
No beta. We're going right into it. It's coming in three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, right? What does that sound like? That sounds like the announcement of every beta they've ever had. <laughs> like, that's what Season of Discovery is. It is in the same vein as what the classic WoW beta was back in 2019, back in May of 2019. They want to go periodically increase the level cap, and they're trying to throw everything in the wall, and they're treating it as if it's as if it's its own live service game, and they're going to be trying to, to get feedback and see what people enjoy and see what people like. And my prediction is that in about a year from now, at the next BlizzCon, we will probably hear about the release of a Classic Plus. I think I think what what a lot of people that say this isn't Classic Plus are are wanting. I think I think you guys are gonna hear like, hey, Classic Plus is coming, or you guys are gonna hear, hey, Classic Plus is coming. We've learned a lot from Season Discovery. We're gonna be releasing a new fresh, this and that. We've made some changes. We've learned a lot, and, and this is the product. And the reason why I think they're doing this, I think they're doing this for for multiple reasons. But the key reason is that Blizzard has one chance to do Classic Plus the right way. You can say, just look at Turtle Wow, just look at this, you know, just look at Ascension. I don't think the Ascension route is a good idea, personally. I do think there's some stuff that you can do to kind of like maybe broaden some, some of the, uh, the kit of some of the classes and stuff like that. But I think when you get to the point where you're changing roles, like again, I think specifically Rogue tanking is, is kind of dumb. Uh, I think Mage healing is kind of dumb. Uh, that's just to name a couple, right? But I would like, what I would like to see is, I would like to see a way to, that, like a two-handed warrior spec for DPS would be made more at, at my own. Oh, hey, to my own loss, to my own loss here, I would like to see like a two-handed warrior spec be be a little bit stronger in PVE. And I say at my own loss because right now I play a rat pallet and I have no competition for two-handed weapons and raids, right? But I do think something like that is good for the game. I'm sad that Classic Plus isn't gonna have that classic feel. Well, and that's that's the key. I feel like they do need to have that. I feel like they do need to have that. And I think I think to have that classic feel, you need to tighten it down a little bit. And I'm worried you're going a little bit overboard. And I want to talk about something else. How many of you guys watch me do the raid? How many of you guys watch me do BFD? If you check out when I did the BFD raid, there's got to be a comment sometime soon. This one. There we go. Dude, next time I go to a convention, I'm bringing my own mic. This thing is brutal. I had I had all my own stuff. Like, I was fully prepared for this thing in every way except for having a better mic setup. Uh, we did this raid, and like at first, I didn't really understand the mechanics of the fight, but I but I realized what they are. Um, I feel like having run BFD, I realized what they are, and then I kept trying to blow the raid up. And then, could you guys hear? I think you guys couldn't hear comms for like half of it. Guzu was like screaming. He's like, dude, who is blowing us up? And I just kept running back at the raid trying to kill everybody. Uh, but it was just really easy. So I was like, whatever. <laughs> Cause I just, I just started trying to, I like, I tried to wipe the group and we just wouldn't wipe. Like I was like, okay, well, but uh, yeah, it was great. So anyway, uh, I'm, I'm like out here. And uh, one of the things I noticed here, I'll, I'll play it on mute. Uh, you know, we've got Crusader Strike, we've got Seal of the Martyr, Command. I, I, I feel like they're focusing on things that you can see too much. And, and, and now I understand why they do that because that's what the average person looks at. I, I really would have liked to see an emphasis on some under the hood style of changes rather than just throwing a bunch of abilities out at you. So as you can see here, one of the things I noticed about this fight about the, the mechanics of BFD. I swear I jumped there, by the way, and it like wasn't sticking, okay? I'm gonna blame the keyboard, okay? What the frick, HyperX, okay? That's why I use my Razer, that's why I use my Razer here, okay? Anyway, um, so I felt like the whole time, <laughs> I felt like the whole time- I'm literally top damage! I, oh yeah, yeah, I felt like I was top damage. I was fighting against the environment as opposed to fighting against the boss. And that is like a key element of what raiding and retail was. That was a key element of what raiding and retail is. Is like you're you're doing all kinds of mechanics to like avoid certain things, you're moving around. And like retail WoW has a lot of like movement displacement abilities, like Palons have Divine Steed, Mages have two blinks, all that kind of stuff. But I feel like when we were doing this boss, it was kind of like we were just chilling. You know, like all this crazy stuff is happening. We're getting ported around, and this plays more like a uh, this plays more like a holiday event boss to me than what would be like. Okay, this is like an this is how classic raids are. You know, 
I, I don't necessarily like this. I, I, I feel like this is, they, they need to find ways to choose the mechanics of the boss fights to make them feel more like, more like classic. It's cool, like actually hitting my buttons felt cool, all that stuff, like that was fun. But like I said, it just does not, it just did not feel like classic. I feel like I'm fighting the environment as opposed, as opposed to fighting the boss too much. Another example of this is on, is on the, uh, is on the turtle boss, Kamura. On the turtle boss, like they were like, okay, you have to, you have to get through his like bubble shield, right? That's the mechanic. You get through his bubble shield, whatever, but you have to avoid the balls, right? Again, it's, I'm fighting the, I'm, I'm fighting the, I'm fighting the environment more than I'm fighting the boss is how it feels. Now we only saw a couple of bosses and then to be fair, I didn't really see the last boss cause I just kind of like pulled everything and I died. <laughs> but that was the, that was the recurring theme of this whole thing. Whenever we were doing mechanics and the mechanics of the fights is too, too much of fighting the environment and not enough of fighting the boss. Uh, and again, I've, I've said it like a hundred times. So you guys are like, okay, S-Fan, we get it. For me having played it, but you guys watching it or, or and just hearing how I felt, how does that make you guys feel? It's not just doing mechanics, right? Like I'm not complaining about doing mechanics. It's just the way that the mechanics are, are done are not in the same vein as uh, what you would typically see in classic. Cause I do think there's a line there, but what I would have liked to see more is like, let's say instead of all these bubble spawns or something, like let's, let's do something where it spawns ads. They should be doing something with ad spawns. You know, so that's something that you want to stay true to classic and keep that classic feel. I think there are times where you can fight against the environment. Don't get me wrong. In the little bit that we've seen, I felt like it was, I, I felt like I was doing a retail raid. In the little bit that we saw, I felt like I was doing a retail raid. And I'm not asking for more tank and spank. What I'm asking for is like classic like mechanic, like ad spawns coming in with turtles. I do think there are some things that like you should avoid the environment and whatnot. I, I don't get me wrong, but I feel like that was like the primary emphasis as opposed to just fighting the boss. Cause yeah, there's, there's times where you're inviting the environment and next as safety dance is a good example, right? Safety dance and next is a good example where you're fighting the environment. How do you guys get wind fury with no shaman? They gave wind fury to feral druids. They, that's one of their runes, which is cool. It's called uh, Wild Strikes, and it's essentially Wind Fury. I'm not familiar with WoW enough to have an opinion on this. They gave no pally buffs to Horde. Well, Horde is fine. They'll, they'll get over it. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, they should probably, what what they should do is, uh, what they should probably do is give like a Blessing of Salvation to the Horde side. Yeah, they should probably, they should probably give like Blessing of Salvation. That's, that's the key thing that I think Horde, Horde would need for PvE is finding like a, uh, blessing of salvation replacement because what horde has in classic normally is they have uh like it's the it's the uh the wind totem which you use for wind fury is also their their threat increase i killed i killed myself with the judgment of <laughs> judgment of uh, blood right there didn't they confirm that shaman had a version of self oh did they because they have it now but you have to trade that or wind fury talking about focusing on class fantasy and just giving the main shaman tool to druid well, it's called Wild Strikes. I mean, I, I I think that's fine. I mean, you could say you could say the same thing about uh yeah. I think I think that's fine. I, I do think there's certain things that are super strong that you should find a way. I think Feral Druid is the class that you'd give it to, uh, and I think I think having some kind of Blessing of Salvation type thing for um for Horde is also important. I think that is a good idea. Doesn't giving Wind Fury to Druids free up the Shaman Salve Totem? It could. You're right. Was Seal Twisting possible? Seal Twisting. So if you want to get into the Paladin nitty gritty. It's not possible in the same way that it is in Burning Crusade with Blood and Command, or Martyrdom and Command. Um, it works in the same way that it works on Era, which kind of isn't really good because it just burns a ton of mana, but maybe it doesn't matter that you burn so much mana because you have ways of getting mana back with Crusader Strike, but you also get mana back from Seal of Martyrdom, and I think Seal of Bl Blood, Martyr, Martyrdom is all the same word because I'll, I'll use them all interchangeably. Um, and I think that when it comes to that, you're going to be doing command and righteousness and you don't get the mana back from martyrdom. So maybe it's not even worth still, but long story short, and, and I know this, this might not be like the, the popular sort of opinion because I do think it was fun. I am just worried that they are doing too much and they are going overboard with it just slightly. And you're losing that core element, class fantasy and classic and staying true to classic. And those are two bullet points. And it makes me feel good that they mentioned it because they know it. I also feel good about, about the people working on classic because I, I know so many of them personally at this point, and I know that they love vanilla WoW. And they love classic WoW. They love Burning Crusade, they love vanilla, they love Wrath. I do feel confident that they're going to do their best, regardless of anything. They're going to do their best 
and that that line of communication is open, right? I, I, I have a very, I feel very good about the line of communication with Blizzard right now, more so than I felt even before Classic came out. And I felt very good about the line of communication with Blizzard. Like I, I talked to Omar constantly before Classic came out. Now he might not tell me what they were doing because just, I mean, that's his job. And, and you know, obviously he can't tell me certain things, but Omar was, was a, like a, a just, I'm telling you, this guy was the freaking light knight in shining armor for the classic community, man. He, he really carried hard. My general consensus so far is that Blizzard is, I, I feel very confident. The line of communication is there. Um, I, I've, I've talked to them quite a bit. I talked to, uh, I, I didn't do an interview, like a, like a content interview, but I, I spent a lot of time talking to, to multiple classic devs that we can, like, it's funny because I, I spent a lot of time on stream. I streamed like 30 hours at BlizzCon. Like my plan with my BlizzCon streams was I wanted to give you guys the ultimate BlizzCon experience, right? Whether I was, I, I was able to go from Warcraft Rumble to, to uh, Season of Discovery to doing a panel. Like my, like I felt, I, I felt really, really good. I, I feel like that was one of the best streams I've ever done from like a, a top to bottom sort of like, I was very proud of that stream. And being able to go from like playing Warcraft Rumble, like like starting out IRL, this is 100% and, and doing this, which I don't think anybody successfully pulled off before, classic plus where I'm like IRL walking around, to being able there to do a live reaction in the crowd. The 25 leveling bracket across all class. This rune for Warlock. Wow, like this, this, this made me proud. And this was Guac Senpai and TT game. were running this on the back end. And, Discovery and I, I'm, on providing new group content that was amazing that they were able to pull this off. Now, first, I want everyone to take a moment. Now, what kind of sucks is you guys are watching me. I'm looking at my phone a lot when I'm looking at chat sometimes, but also I'm like talking to them and making sure everything's good. So like anytime I do this, I'm going to be looking at my phone a lot, just so you guys know. Um, it's not that I'm not paying attention. I'm just making sure that you guys have the best experience. But yeah, I felt I felt really, really good about that. To kind of dial it back a little bit, when we did BFD, I feel like they should redo some of the mechanics a little bit in order for it to feel a little bit more like classic. Also, I'll say something else, and I haven't really seen this criticism. Probably, maybe, maybe I just haven't seen it. Maybe it's there. I feel like BFD was kind of a bad choice for the first raid of Season of Discovery. BFD, it's too much like Molten Core. It feels like a wet Molten Core. And, and I feel like because Molten Core is what it is at level 60, like this kind of, like it's kind of claustrophobic. You're in the you're in the caves, you're going into water and out of water, up and down. And what I think would have been a better choice would have been Shadow Fang Keep. I think, I think a Shadow Fang Keep would have been amazing. I feel like, I feel like Shadow Fang Keep would have been absolutely outstanding. Well, you guys say it's too hard for Alliance to reach, but keep in mind, this is Classic Plus Beta. This is Season of Discovery. Maybe something is, is put in. Maybe there's a new flight path put in that makes it easier to get there. But dude, Shadowfang Keep, Arugal at the end of it. I mean, it's, it's iconic, right? I think Shadowfang Keep would have been amazing. Unfortunately, they went with this. Now, I think there's a couple reasons they went with this over Shadowfang Keep. Because I, I talked to somebody on the team and they were saying, saying like, yeah, like... Uh, there's like a lot of different factors to when it went into which one we chose and I understand why they would go with BFD because Honestly BFD is just not that popular of a, of a dungeon on its own Like people do BFD and there's some quests that you can do there, but let's be honest the the amount of people that do BFD Is not that high and it's also kind of forgettable So I think that maybe people aren't gonna miss the BFD dungeon so maybe that was part of it. I also think another part of it is the fact that it's in Ashenvale, which is essentially the end game zone at level 25. That I think is cool. Cause now it's like you're in the big PVP end game zone and you have to like fight through PVP to get to the dungeon. Isn't that why they chose it to have more people experience a less than used dungeon? There's a, they said there's a lot of factors that went into it and I'm sure that's one of them. How did Warrior look? Uh, Warrior looked like they didn't buff it as much as, as they buffed the other classes. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. I don't want to see rogue tanks. Do, do you guys think it makes sense to have rogue tanks? I, I think it makes sense to do certain things like enhanced shamans, having some tanking abilities. And I, I think that's fine. I think that enhanced shaman tanks are kind of cool because it helps the horde side have more people to be able to tank dungeons. 
I don't think they should necessarily be as strong as like a warrior tank would be, but I think that they should have enough tanking capabilities to be either slightly better than prop paladins are in vanilla currently, in OG vanilla, or uh, about the same level with, with a little bit less like, because uh, paladins are like, you can prop paladin tank, but you have to do all kinds of crazy stupid stuff. And uh, it's fun for me as a paladin player, but it's it's not really particularly good design, right? Like that's something I can I can well admit, uh, and I, and I think that they should uh, they should have maybe at at least that much tanking capability, but it should be easier, right? Or it should be more uh, streamlined. And and I know I have a lot of complaints, and I have a lot of I'm very nitpicky about this stuff because I'm so just damn passionate and i will always be so damn passionate about classic wow but i i'm very confident in who is actually on this team and and the 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 line of communication is so strong i'll tell you one of the devs literally gave me his phone number and said i want to hear everything you have to say and i told him i said if you give me your phone number you better go to bed with do not disturb on because i will spam text you at 3 a.m whenever i randomly get tilted whenever i think about this. i I am like about to go to bed and I will, I have done this before where I'm spammed. I've done it. Okay. If you watch my burning crusade arena streams, you know, all those times where I like, I lose a game because the freaking engineering doubled healer, like, Oh, Druid priest again, engineering belt, all 4k absorb. And I lose a game and I'm sitting there like this. Okay. Let's cue. No, hold on. dog ass shit ass update how come paladins can't fly no all kinds of stuff like that right i told him i was like you better go to bed with do not disturb because i will dm you i will spam dm you at 3 a.m right like i just i am w tiz dude w tiz that's me okay i feel so strongly about the the line of communication and i feel so strongly about their passion that i am confident that it's gonna get figured out season of discovery is the wow classic plus beta and they have one chance at making Classic Plus right. And I think that they are approaching it the right way by going for Season of Discovery, by approaching the Season of Discovery in the same exact way that they approached the Classic the classic Beta back in 2019. Go out, set a, set a mid-level cap. By the way, did you notice how they, they the, the emphasis on mid-level content? That was one of my key points of something that I wanted to see in Classic Plus that I was very happy about. I was very, very happy to see that they wanted to put an emphasis on mid-level content in, uh, in, in Season of Discovery. That was cool, because that was something that I, I personally was like, that was on my wish list. That's big time. That is what Vanilla WoW is. Vanilla WoW is about level 1 to level 60 and level 60. You start losing that. Really, in Burning Crusade, you start to lose that. But in the later expansions, definitely, like you don't have that as much. I don't know if this rune system is being uh, utilized properly in order to be able to uh, give you that classic feel while trying to try and do the things they wanna do and kind of expand your kit and do all those things while keeping that classic feel. They kind of play out like glyphs in Wrath a little bit, but the fact that I, I could, I had them all here, right? Seal of Martyrdom, Divine Storm, Horn of Lordaeron, Aegis. Now these are not balanced. I do wanna say this, uh, cause one of the devs straight up told me this, they're like, look, this is not tuned. Right, just be keeping it real. This isn't really tuned right now. This is this is something they put out. This is this is what it is for like our first version or our uh, first look, whatever. But they're not really tuned, so they probably are going to get tuned down the road. So I, I'm less worried about the tuning. I'm more worried about the fact that I'm going in between poles, and I'm like, oh, th we have an AOE pack. Let me let me change my chest rune for to, to go with something else. Oh, this is a single target. I don't need this thing. Let's change this and let's do this. I'm going up each from pole to pole that I'm changing. I'm like respecking my runes and changing my loadout. What does that sound like? It sounds like retail. They literally, that you literally do that in retail. It's a, it's a hassle. In, in retail, you have your talents and you go and, okay, I have my level five talent or 15, whatever it is, right? You have your, you have your different level talents and you go and you change them from pole to pole. I think something like dual spec is not something in the essence of what classic WoW is. And some people are like, oh, it saves time. It does this. That's how we got to the game that everybody complained about and people begged for years that they wanted legacy servers years ago. 
People begged for vanilla WoW, right? They begged and begged, we don't like this. It's these things, these, these small little things that happened over the years that made the game easier and made the game more convenient. And I don't mean easier in the sense of difficulty, I made easier in the sense of uh, like actually being able to, to, to like change your spec and stuff like that. My point is, as bad as a Karen, yes, I'm, I am gonna care, Karen this, right? I am, because I, I'm very passionate about this thing being good. Blizzard has one chance at making Classic Plus good, and they gave themselves, they, they, they manufactured two chances for Classic Plus by making Season of Discovery, which is your Classic Plus beta. How is quality of life a bad thing? Quality of life can be a bad thing whenever you're putting a Band-Aid fix to a problem that it, it affects things in other ways. When I go back, when I have to respec, what do I do? I go back to the city, I'm, I'm walking into the city, I'm flying in, I'm hearthing in, all that stuff. And I'm going back to Stormwind. I'm going back to Ironforge. I'm going back to Orgrimmar. I couldn't agree more, S-Fan. These are, these are very important things because, especially in Vanilla WoW, there's like a whole degree of like, uh, uh, of, a, of a social kind of like, like, I don't know what the word is. Is it sociology? Like there's, there's like, it, it's, it's how the, the world moves and how the world evolves and how people evolve. That is incredibly important. It's a waste of time. I don't talk to people when I go respec. You don't, and that's okay. Because that level five that just randomly walked into Stormwind because he was trying to do that Stormwind armor marker quest and he sees that level 60 warlock coming in with his tier five armor. And he's like, oh my gosh, look at that guy. That's sick. I, I, I saw that guy. I want to be that guy. I want that to be me. I want to see that paladin in judgment armor walks in. Boom, boom, boom. He's got his hood on. Dude, what? Right click inspect. Where did you get that? That's, it's, it's so valuable and it's so important. And despite what you think, despite how many years you've been playing this game, there's somebody else new that is starting to play that game today. There is somebody new playing that game today and they need to see people in the world. They need to see people around because that's what an MMO is. Now, here's, here's what you're saying. Here's another, here's another argument against what I'm saying. Well, I just have a warlock summon me back. I just hearth. I hearth, mage ports me to the trainer, I go there, and then I, and I like immediately get a summon back. I'm not in the world, right? But you know what had to happen? I have a summoning alt. I have a level 20 summoning alt somewhere in the world. I just summoned myself back. I don't, I mean, I'm barely even walking around. That warlock had to level the 20, didn't he? You, you had to take that warlock and you had to go through Elwyn Forest. You had to go through Dunmoreau. You, you had to go through the barons and you had to get to level 20. And during that time, people saw you in the world. You, you grouped to somebody for a quest, maybe. Maybe you didn't, maybe, maybe you personally didn't, but somebody else who did that, they had to group for somebody with a quest. They went and did a dungeon with somebody. These things are, are, are so impactful and they snowball throughout the, the course of the game. I think it's very, very important. You guys said, no, they got boosted. Okay, relax. That, there's a reason why they got rid of the boosting, you know? It's because they wanted to force people out in the world. You know, as fan, we've been playing hardcore solo the entire time. Trust me, no one groups at all. You have been playing hardcore solo. I have seen tons of people walking around and I've seen the world alive and that is so good for the game. I can talk separately about about hardcore. I can. That's a whole nother thing. And I'll tell you why hardcore makes vanilla wow. A lot of the things about vanilla wow better. Hardcore does. It also makes some things worse, but that's a whole separate discussion. But I'm telling you, if you want to stay true to classic, if you want to keep class fantasy, you want to stay true to classic, you want to keep that classic feel. There are so many little things that you have to be very careful of to, to, to hold you gotta hold it sacred, okay? I'm telling you, man. It's very easy for this to snowball out of control and to turn into, instead of classic plus, you end up getting retail minus. And there is, there is a very, very fine line between those two things. It, it, there is a very fine line. And, and I'm very confident that the classic team is so incredibly passionate about 
vanilla WoW and classic WoW that I, I genuinely believe they are going to be able to get it right. Maybe because I'm a moron. <laughs> but I've seen the passion. I've talked to them personally. I know several of them personally. Like I said, one of the team leads gave me his phone number and said, message me anytime. He literally gave me his cell phone number, message me anytime. I want to hear everything after BlizzCon. And I said, you want to get dinner? And he's like, dude, I'm married. And I'm like, oh, my bad. So, <laughs> my, 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 my point being, he needs to see this clip. Wait, what's the clip? So, I do think that I've always been somebody who's like, you have to account for the times. I made a video where I talked about having to account for the times. I talk, I talk to, uh, I talk to the devs at BlizzCon about, look, for world buffs, all world buffs should be undispellable. If you make all world buffs undispellable and you you add Chrono Boon into the game from the beginning, you fix pretty much the entire the entire core of what the problem is that people have with world buffs. I don't want to get my world buff. I don't want to go. That's classic, okay? That's classic, baby. Get over it, okay? Join a guild that doesn't make you get world buffs. But as far as fixing the raid logging problem, fixing the griefing problem of some level 30 griefing you no skill being dead resing, whatever i i genuinely believe and i think they will fix it i think they will make all the world buffs undispellable half of them are undispellable anyway kevin jordan the original class designer for vanilla wow has said himself he has said himself that it was n that that was not uh the that was not their intention that type of gameplay was not their intention now sometimes emergent gameplay can end up being something that's very good for the game right Sometimes intended gameplay isn't always what's best for the game. And sometimes emergent gameplay is best. Sometimes you have to figure it out and be like, okay, we gotta, we gotta fix this so the game is played as intended. As opposed to, hey, I got my world buffs, it's Thursday at 3 a.m., log off and I'll see you guys on Tuesday and then the world feels dead. Having to log out and not uh, play to keep them is the issue, exactly. So do you think this season of Discovery is just a beta for Classic Plus? I am fully confident without having being told those words exactly that season of discovery is what is essentially the beta for classic plus and blizzard manufactured two chances at doing classic plus the right way by making season of discovery i think from a business perspective they did it right and they are going to try and throw everything at the wall see what sticks I'm, I'm really trivializing it a little bit but just for the sake of simplicity they're throwing everything at the wall see what sticks and then in a year from now at blizzcon we are going to hear about Classic Plus. You guys love Season of Discovery. We learned a lot from you guys. Now it's time. It's finally here. Boom. Classic, whatever they want to name it, right? They probably won't call it Classic Plus. Season of Plus. <laughs> but that that is my prediction. And remember that a year from now. Classic Divided. Are you an OG player? I am. Yeah. I kind of took a break from Classic last year because I'm not a huge Wrath guy. Really wish they gave us at least one fresh. I would not be surprised to see a fresh at some point. I also wouldn't be surprised to see a TBC era. I don't know if they're going to do a, a Burning Crusade era, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it. With all that being said, I am very, very excited for Season Discovery, okay? November 30th, it's gonna be back. I'm gonna be here, right? Classic S fan, all that stuff, okay? We're, we're, we're bringing it back. WoW is back, baby, all right? WoW is back, Rhett's gonna crank. It's gonna be great. We're gonna full send it. I'm also gonna be starting a guild again, okay? We're gonna run it. I don't know what I'm gonna call it, but we're gonna run it back, okay? Crusade, we're gonna run it back. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little bit different of how I used to run Crusade. So, so we're probably gonna call it something else. I, I don't know what I'm gonna name it yet, but we're gonna run it back, okay? Crusade is still active, by the way. Five raid teams. I had a video where I met a bunch of them in real life. There's five raid teams right now. Anyway. I hope you guys are excited as I am about the future of WoW. Even a retail has exciting stuff coming. But I hope you guys are excited. If you guys like the video, hit the like button, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And uh, make sure to check out my Twitch channel, SFANTV, YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter. Everything is SFANTV. X, Threads, TikTok, whatever it is, everything is SFANTV. And uh, yeah. 
Make sure to subscribe, follow, turn on your notifications, all that stuff, because uh, I'm always here. I do literally everything, and I love Classic WoW. And it's coming back. So, hope you guys enjoyed.